Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we are going to have some fun with the Jiggle Deformer and we're going to get jiggy with it today. Yes we are. Uh, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how uh, much fun the Jiggle Deformer is. It's one of my favorite deformers. Uh, and it can really spice up your animations in Cinema 4D. So uh, basically what I have up here is the 12 principles of animation uh, from the old men uh, that kind of built up the uh, Disney Animation Studios, very famous, like the, the very old school animators uh, that kind of developed these 12 principles of animation. Uh, and the Jigoro form will help you achieve the, uh, some of these principles, uh, specifically the, the squash and stretch, um, the anticipation, follow through and overlapping. These are all the type of movements or added secondary animation uh, that can be applied using the Jigoro former. Now, uh, if you've watched my latest tutorials, you'll, you'll really notice that I've been really pushing you to think outside of the, the box uh, when it comes to Cinema 4D and not only use it when you have a 3D project. Uh, hopefully I've encouraged you to to kind of think about ways that you can creatively use Cinema 4D for your 2D style animation. So by using the cell shader uh, to get a nice flat shading for your 3D objects to make that 2D uh, type of object and then using the tools in Cinema 4D that really make it easy to do some of these animations. So the Jiggle Deformer is one of these, uh, another th uh, tool from Cinema 4D that can really help you even if you're doing a 2D type of animation uh, by adding the squatch and stretch and these, these a few of the principles of animation that are right up on the screen right now. Uh, so to kind of, if you wanted to get a jiggly kind of uh, look for your 2D stuff in After Effects, you would have to go and you know use the puppet tool and then keyframe the puppet tool and there's all those issues you got to deal with uh, even with the puppet tool like the starch tool and starching out little parts and the triangles and all that mess of stuff but with the Jigga Deformer you don't need to even add extra keyframes you basically apply to Deformer and you're good to go. So enough blabbing uh, in my face on the screen. Let's actually jump into Cinema 4D and let's uh, have some fun with the Jiggle Deformer. All right, let's get jiggly with it. So let's set up this scene right here. Uh, if I hit play, you'll see I have a foam finger, a uh, little object I made with um, cell shader. Whoop. Because we got nice noise and everything like that. So I made this really flat looking uh, 3D object. Uh, and the whole point of this is to really encourage you to use the Jiggle Deformer in your 2D really cool workflow. Effects. So the Jiggle Deformer is pretty, it's named very aptly. Uh, it, it just adds jiggle to your, your object. So if I turn this Jiggle Deformer on. This is just set to all of the default settings here, and you can actually find the Jiggle Deformer up in the Deformers menu. And I'm going to hit play, and you can see that just by the, using the default settings, we're getting this bouncy, uh, jiggly kind of motion. Not too, too much jiggle, but you're seeing this kind of like wiggly scale going on, and that is because. Um, we have no fall off. It's just an infinite amount of uh, jiggle, uh, jiggliness applied to the entirety of our geometry. Uh, but where the jiggle deformer really comes in uh, handy is using all these fall off shapes. So this isn't all too interesting. I mean, maybe this is good enough for what you want to do. You just want this extra kind of like bouncy. It's almost like if you applied uh, a delay effector set to spring mode to an object like this is kind of what you would get you get this bouncy uh, overshoot on the movement and on the scale and stuff like that uh, but where the real power comes in is going and choosing a fall off and right now I'm going to set it to linear and I have just this uh, linear fall off here you can see uh, that what the linear fall off is going to do let me actually turn this uh, let me move this up a little bit. So here is our fall off here. And you can see that whatever is 
below the fall off will get no jiggle applied at all and then you'll just apply a uh, stronger uh, jiggle as you go to the top of the fall off so what this is going to do is apply stronger jiggle as we go up our object linearly so watch what happens is we now have a, a large amount of jiggle happening on the top half of our our foam finger here and we get this cool little movement so that one finger in the very top of the foam finger is really jiggly and the rest not so much but because we've restricted the jiggle to just one part of our object you're really getting that sense that this is a really jiggly object and it's kind of looking like how a real foam finger looks when you wave it around uh, so let's actually go in and adjust uh, some of these Let's adjust and I'll actually go through all of these settings here. So the strength is pretty self-explanatory. It just uh, controls the strength or the amount of jiggle. So if I bring that up, you can see that really getting jiggly and that's a health hazard. Someone's eye is going to get poked out with that. So we're going to bring that back down. Uh, stiffness is just the overall stiffness of the geometry. So as I bring that up, you can see that kind of wrangles in uh, some of the jiggliness there. Uh, the structural uh, comes in handy when you have uh, a larger object with a lot more uh, curves and crevices and stuff like that. So you really won't tell the difference between a low structural value and a high structural value. Uh, but basically what the structural value does is kind of controls the amount of like jiggles that pass through or kind of ripple over your object. And the higher the structural value, the more those kind of jiggles or little springs uh, that run across the object want to go back to uh, its original position. Uh, so if you have a lot of, if you have, uh, if you apply a jiggle deformer to an object and some of your points are just going all out of control uh, with this set to a low amount, uh, by bringing the structural value up, that'll help wrangle in. Uh, some of those points. So if you're used to, if you're if you're familiar with a, a dynamics tag, it's kind of like the under the forces tab. You have the follow position, follow rotation. This is kind of what that is. It's only only this is kind of dealing with the uh, points and the springiness on your geometry. So this is kind of like a high value is like a high follow position, follow rotation, low value not so much you can see that the structural value does kind of affect uh, the jiggliness of this but I usually keep this at 100 uh, just to avoid any issues um, the drag is a big one too that really affects how uh, the jiggle uh, looks and the drag is basically you know what what drag is is it allows more friction uh, to happen to occur so if I bring this way up you can see that uh, our fingers kind of really lagging behind uh, because of that extra drag value that more friction being added to the jiggle uh, but actually with a high dr uh, drag value here this is kind of we're kind of getting the movement that we would expect from a foam finger uh, so we kind of wrangled in the uh, the jiggliness of it and that finger is kind of uh, doing a little uh, squash and stretch, a little bit of anticipation kind of movement going on. Uh, and then we have our advanced tab here. And basically what the advanced tab has is springs and iterations. And springs is the total amount of springs across your object. So since we have a linear fall off, if I bring my springs level down to one, see what happens. We just have a very stiff uh, object without a lot of spring because we just have a single spring and if you just move a, a single spring around it's not going to move all that much but as we add more springs in we're going to get a lot more bending going on because we're adding more springs that will then further uh, bend and deform across our object so that's springs uh, iterations kind of is like a stiffness value for those springs. So you can see with an iteration of four, uh, we're getting a lot of movement there. But if, if I bring this value uh, more and more up, you'll see that that's kind of making our spring stiffer. 
And actually at a value of 10, we're, we're getting a nice little subtle jiggliness going on uh, that I think works pretty good. We can probably jack up the strength here. Uh, but I think... I think this is looking pretty accurate to how a foam finger would look. So that's all the settings on our Jiggle Deformer. Uh, you can kind of mess around, get whatever kind of look that you're going for. You can get really exaggerated by bringing up the strength uh, and maybe bring up the drag value a lot too. So you can see that you're really getting some uh, pretty crazy effects by just adjusting a few of these values. So that's a high strength and a high drag. Uh, going on, we can bring our stiffness a lot uh, way up too, and we're kind of getting uh, wrangling that back in. It's looking a little bit more realistic, but you can have a lot of fun. The Jiggle Deformer is a ton of fun to work with, uh, it really is. And and again, this is no keyframes added at all to create this extra movement. So like I said, um, if you want to get this nice uh, like squash and stretchy or uh, you know this bendy motion. Uh, animation applied to your object to do something like this in After Effects. I mean, you'd have to get your object, you have to set up the uh, puppet tool, and then actually animate and keyframe all of that. But uh, in After or in Cinema 4D, you don't have to do that at all with the Jiggle Deformer. You just apply that bad boy, and it uh, does its uh, cool stuff. It jigifies uh, anything it touches. So uh, just to go a little bit further. Uh, so that's using fall off, and you have all these different fall off shapes. So uh, one way you can also control how your jiggle is applied to uh, an object or a piece of geometry is by using a vertex map. So in our jiggle deformer, we have a restriction tab, and we also have maps that we can use here. And you can actually like paint on a surface, kind of do like a polygon selection. Uh, of where you want your uh, jiggliness to be applied to. So I'm going to make sure I have my uh, object selected. I'm gonna go to character and I'm gonna uh, paint a vertex map by going to my paint tool. And then if I just click on my object, you'll see everything goes red and then if I'm painting, I'm making this kind of yellowish, uh, yellowish um, color that I'm applying to my finger. And you'll see if I just kind of bring this along. So what, what's going on is I'm painting uh, the finger with what I want to be uh, added, that w what I want jiggle applied to. So this part of the, uh, everything in yellow will have jiggle applied. Whatever's in red will not have any jiggle applied. So to make this really work, we're gonna need to have a nice blend between these two colors. Uh, could cut kind of like a fall off. If we have a very short fall off, we're going to get uh, some issues with the bend and stuff like that. So once you actually paint on your surface, what we're going to do is just kind of blend and smooth everything out. So if I just blend, we're going to kind of smooth that gradient as best we can here. So we get a nice little gradated uh, vertex map here. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's go back here and blend this back here as well. And so what happens is that creates a vertex map once you start pressing, uh, once you start painting. So that that stores all of this uh, paint information, all this weighting or vertex uh, information. So what you can do is go into the jiggle drag and drop that uh, vertex map in there, and that'll effectively be a fall off. So now if I hit play, you can see that it's not perfect, it probably needs smoothed out a little bit more, but you can see that this kind of acts like a fall off. Everything that is yellow has some, uh, some amount of jiggle applied to it, and whatever is red has no uh, or solid red has no jiggle applied at all. So you can have a lot of fun with different maps. Uh, if you have a lot, a lot more comp or a more complex object, uh, a vertex map might work better than just using a fall off. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, so vertex maps, you can create them by going to your paint tool and just painting on here. And you have all these different modes: add, erase, all that good stuff. Um, 
but yeah, so that's another way to control jiggle across your objects. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to uh, demonstrate is let's first get our uh, good buddy Baymax in here. And what I'm going to demonstrate is not only using a fall off or just moving an object around, you can actually use uh, forces. You can see that the Jiggle Deformer has this forces tab in here. Uh, and what we're going to do is bring a force. So let's go and bring a, a particle, uh, a particle, what are these guys called? Particle effector, All right? And this is just wind. And let's bring the let's bring the fan over here. Let's uh, put it in front of Baymax here, and just rotate it. Let's cool this guy off, and we will make sure that we bring the wind deformer in there. Uh, under the forces tab, and if I hit play, you'll see nothing's really happening. Uh, but what I need to do is make sure I bring up the value pretty high here. Uh, and you'll see nothing really happens uh, except for the very start. And what we need to do is also, like I said, uh, as I demonstrated before, the real power of the Jiggle Deformer happens when you add a falloff or vertex map kind of thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go f uh, into the falloff and just choose another linear falloff here. And now... Uh, if we go into and let's bring the speed up a little bit more and right now it's just hitting a constant speed of wind at them but where this really comes in uh, where it really gets cool is when you add a little bit of turbulence here so I just brought the turbulence up and you can see that now Baymax looks like he's getting uh, affected by wind here so he's acting kind of like a flag uh, which is pretty cool effect uh, and again, no keyframes or anything at all. And you can adjust uh, the fall off here. So you only want his top half to get hit with wind. Uh, you can just adjust this fall off here. And let me get make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Uh, and there we go. So we can make it so his feet really don't get hit with the wind, but the top of his body really does. Uh, and one thing I'd like to mention, if you don't know about this already, is uh, so how... Uh, a fall off works is uh, especially a linear fall off is you have a, a linear gradation of 0% uh, to 100% between the this visual uh, fall off aid here and that red is that 50% or that middle of the fall off so you go from 0% of jiggle to 100% of that uh, strength of jiggle being applied but what if you want uh, you don't want this to be restricted to 100%. Say the further up you go in the linear falloff, you want even more uh, jiggle applied. And to do this, you just uncheck this clamp function. Now, now watch what happens to Baymax right above his midsection here as I turn off the clamped. So right when I turn it off, you can see that that wind is really whipping his face. And what happens is what this clamp is doing is clamping the value of 0 to 100%. It's clamping it to 100 and clamping this to 0. But when you uncheck that, it's no longer clamped to that 100% value. So what it's going to actually do is apply more jiggle as you go up. So you know, you're not just stopping at 100. We have 110% right about here and 120 and as, as the fall off goes up, uh, the higher up it is, the more of this wiggle is going to be applied. So if I bring this value all the way down, you can see that the top is getting even hit more with that wind because that clamped is no longer uh, applied. So you can really see the difference between clamped and unclamped. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when using the Jiggle Deformer. Uh, and fall off and just I mean this goes this goes uh, also with MoGraph effectors and using clamped and not using clamped with with certain effects like that so uh, just a little handy tip for you guys to uh, kind of be aware of when you're using Jiggle uh, so uh, not only can you uh, you know use 
Jiggle Deformer uh, with wind forces or just animations, uh, one thing that is I found is really cool is if you have characters. So uh, right here I have a fully formed or uh, fully rigged Baymax character and right now he's doing the doing a little dance he's doing the hey ho hey ho little rap jig so he's he's getting jiggy with it and we're, what we're gonna do is add some uh, jiggliness to this uh, uh, pose morphed animation so I have my character object I have pose morph my pose morph tag kind of uh, just blending through the different poses that I made and if you want to know more about the pose morph uh, uh, pose morph tag be sure to check my uh, website idesign.com and I have a, a pose morph tutorial in there uh, super super powerful uh, tag if you haven't used it uh, definitely learn more about that but uh, definitely handy when you're using uh, when you're animating characters so I'm just kind of morphing between uh, this pose and his his little squatting down his little hip dip and then to the left again and <laughs> my little names for him the hey ho and the hip dip uh, so right now this animation is looking pretty good uh, but what happens when you bring in the jiggle deformer so again I just have a linear fall off and you can see it right over there and I'll just kinda let this play and you can see that by adding this this small amount of jiggle this is just the default settings here uh, this is adding some really nice jiggly motion to our character and just you can really get the sense that this guy is a robotic balloon dude which is really weird but you can really get the sense with this jiggle applied that this guy is very uh, uh, blubbery kinda you know you get that really good feel for what kind of uh, object this guy is uh, and again no extra keyframes key added so with character animations jiggle deformer is also pretty awesome so just to recap um, jiggle deformer pretty dang cool um, you it allows you to apply uh, nice jiggly squash and stretch uh, motions to your objects um, you can use it with uh, vertex maps to kind of paint what object or what parts of your geometry you want to have jiggle applied to uh, works with uh, falloffs uh, works with um, with wind objects, with any particle modifiers you you want to do, uh, and it also has a built-in uh, gravity that you can see that right off the bat. Uh, well, I need a negative value. He'll just kind of squash down because of that gravity value, so that's built in in the forces tab. Um, and again, if I just kind of move this guy around, you can see that he's uh, just jiggly right there too. So you get some really good squash and stretch. Uh, animation uh, without any extra keyframes. So you can just keyframe this whole entire uh, object of him just kind of bouncing around and you'll get this nice squash and stretch. This is really really cool because it's no extra keyframes at all. Uh, you can also get him kind of rotating uh, like that or even forward uh, and you get this nice jiggly motion because we have this uh, linear fall off going on. So that is uh, my kind of fun with the jiggle deformer uh, like I said it's it's a ton of fun to just kind of apply to your animations and see see what it does um, because it can really spice things up make make a cool animation even more cool uh, and really can help you out in your 2d workflow uh, in in cinema 4d so like I, I made the the foam finger with the cell shader uh, and like I said, this is way easier, no keyframes, it's way easier than doing the puppet tool or messing around with that. Um, so hopefully this will encourage you to uh, get jiggy with it in your own projects and add the Jiggle Deformer to uh, your workflow. So that is it for me, and I promise I will not say getting jiggy with it anymore. <laughs> uh, but hopefully you got something from this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Later, guys.